Similarly, there is another report, it is, this time it is coming from the Commission of Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribe. So a report was given by the to the Government of India by the Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribe Commission, which suggested that the legal aid should be made available to the Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribes. The report highlights various aspects of making payments to the lawyers involved in the process of providing legal aid. It lays down that the fee that is to be paid to the lawyers associated with the legal aid should be on the scale of fee paid to the government cases. That means how much you are paying to the government cases to a lawyer, a similar amount should be paid to the advocates who are representing poor people. And the most notable uh, development came by way of free legal aid bill in 1970. It's an initiation by uh, uh, Mr. Madhu Limai, who is a member of the parliament. He introduced this bill as a private member bill in January 30, 1970. I think this is the first attempt to provide legal aid with a statutory backing. The bill aimed at enacting a law for legal aid to the poor and needy persons involved in criminal cases. It was introduced in the Lok Sabha in March 13, 1970. The object or the reasons why this bill was introduced is to implement the fundamental right under Article 22 of the Constitution of India. Article 22 of the Constitution of India gives a fundamental right to every arrested person, right to represent through a lawyer of his or her own choice. To implement or to protect that right, a statutory a, or a mandatory provision of providing free legal aid to these people is necessary. And also because of the poverty, the large number of people are unable to avail the services of lawyers, this bill was also introduced for that. And it was also felt that every civilized country considers that it is their responsibility to provide free legal aid to assist those people who are indigent. And also it taken into the consideration that at present in India, very, very few cases where the legal aid was provided. Usually the legal aid was provided in some of the cases where capital punishment is the sentence. But in other offenses, usually the legal aid is not provided to the arrested and accused persons. So, the bill may impose, if the bill is passed, it may impose some kind of financial liability or a burden on the state, but it would act as a deterrent against indiscriminate arrest and framing false charges against the uh, people. And Provision for this legal assistance would also ensure a fair trial and a better administration of justice, again, which is a basic fundamental right of every person under Article 21 of the Constitution. The provisions of the Free Legal Aid Bill 1970 as as follows. The central government and the state government respectively asked to publish in an official gazette about who is entitled for the legal aid. It proposes a stage-wise implementation. Unlike other schemes where it requires you have to implement at a time, the bill considers the financial status of the states. Therefore, it says that you introduce this legal aid stage-wise. It says every three years, one-third of the administrative units or districts within the jurisdiction of the union territories or within the jurisdiction of the state must implement the scheme. That means if it is a state, one third of the state should be implemented within three years. Then every three years you have to add one third. So as a result what happened within nine years, the entire territory is covered with this bill. That means the act would apply are completely enforceable within nine years throughout the territory of India. However, the bill is not passed. So, the National Conference on Legal Aid, the another initiative or towards providing legal aid. A National Conference on Legal Aid was held under the chairmanship of uh, the eminent lawyer, the Supreme Court advocate late Dr. L. M. Singhvi. He 
identified or I would rather say that he realized that the task of organizing legal aid to a country like India is a vast country, number of people more and more poor people, it is a very, very challenging task. It was, he, he, it was stated that the legal aid program was not uniform in India. Each state has their own different style. Therefore, there is a need for bringing uniformity. The scope of legal aid was very limited and the scarcity of the funds were the major problem as we have seen throughout what we are discussing that the finance is the major reason for not providing the legal aid. Therefore, making legal aid as a reality, state would have to allocate a substantial funds for the free legal aid. That is what uh, he insisted through this national conference. He further added that the Indian Bar Council, which is the second largest bar in the world, which should be utilized for providing free legal aid. And for the first time, he recognizes the value of the law students and says that they should be involved in providing legal aid. And he also says that involving the law students would make the law students socially responsible. They, they would become better lawyers and better citizens because early exposure to the problems of the poor would be a, a great help to the students in understanding uh, the importance of the legal aid. Then the conference also led to an amendment to the Advocates Act 1961. So in the year 1970, it was amended and the Bar Council was called upon to take upon the responsibility of the legal aid without the aid of the state government. That means without financial commitments either from the central government or state government, it becomes the responsibility of the Bar Council to provide legal aid. So to conclude or to see what happened throughout from 1949 to 1970, what these developments achieved in providing legal aid? I would see number one, it sensitized everybody that the legal aid is necessary and it is not only a, a state obligation, but it is also a professional obligation on the part of the lawyers. The second one, what I look at it is the realization of the importance of legal aid. So it highlighted how important legal aid to the poor is necessary and that legal aid should be a free legal aid to the poor. And at the same time, though we realize the importance, we also understand the challenges. It is a huge gigantic task to provide legal aid for so many people. And also we found that the financial stability of the state is very, very important in providing legal aid. And another important thing is that all these efforts has resulted in a movement for a legal aid. It, it, it formed a base for the subsequent developments which we would see in the next class. Uh, the developments between 1970 till 1976 that all the further reports, the further uh, recommendations, uh, uh, these are the fertile grounds from where they got these recommendations. So on a whole, we would leave today's class that we understand that the legal aid is very important for providing access to justice. However, if the class has any questions or any clarifications required, you are free to write to us, join in the forum. You could ask questions, you could make comments, we would respond to you. Thank you.